hello and welcome to our webinar with the interesting topic reduced costs per piece for brake discs with modern fully automated manufacturing solutions. My name is Melanie Balmer and I'm very pleased that so many of you are taking part today. We have two experts for this topic in the studio today. Firstly, I would like to welcome Mr. Martin Abendschein very warmly. Hello. He joined the EMAC group nine years ago and is the expert at the area of chassis parts. Secondly, we have Mr. Michael Ehring with mm -hmm. us. He joined the EMAC group two years ago and is responsible for project planning of manufacturing systems. And my, Martin and Michael will guide us through the webinar today. Thank you, Melanie. Good morning, everybody. It's also my pleasure. So today we want to show you something about brake disc manufacturing. But first, let's start with a short introduction about brake systems. So as you can see here, already Carl Benz was using somehow a brake system to break his Benz patent motor wagon number one. Then the first car with four brake discs was the American model Tucker 48 and then at the end you can see here also what is the current situation for brake discs with coated brake discs which are used here for example in a Porsche car and how does a brake system function you can see here we have here just a small model of such a brake system. So first of all, we do have here the brake cylinder, which brings then the mechanical pressure from your feet to a fluidic pressure, which then activates here the brake pads by using of these brake pistons. So out of this system, EMAC can produce all the main parts. First of all, the brake disc itself. Second, the brake cylinder third the brake pistons and of course beside of this we also can produce all the parts inside the homokinetic parts the flanges itself and so on but today we want to talk about only brake discs so if we are looking now about the process chain of a typical brake disc production we do have first the war part handling so here we are using either the operator to bring the part on the infit conveyors or using a robot system or bin picking or what else. Then we do have the machining operation itself, turning and drilling. Then afterwards we do have the accompanying equipment like balancing, like post-process measuring, marking. And at the end we do have the finished part handling also by using a robot or we transfer the parts directly to the coating or painting area. And how such a line so process chain could look like, my colleague Michael Ewing will now explain to you. So we have uh, developed a concept for a uh, full automatically uh, brake disc line, which has an output for 400,000 parts per year. And starting in the front of with a uh, robot cell where the operator can bring in two raw part boxes. The robot will pick out the cast brake disc and bring it onto um, the conveyor which goes into our first VSC 400 Duo machine. So we have there two spindles. The first spindle is for the OP10 and the second spindle is for the OP20. Machining the first uh, sides of the brake disc going out of the machine and there we have the EMAC gantry system which have uh, the possibility to bring the machine brake disc onto the conveyor, brings it to the next machine. Second one flip the part from OP10 to OP20 and bring out the brake disc onto the SPC station as well as bring it back into the system onto the conveyor. Then going further to the OP30 and 40, which is also an uh, WSC 400 Duo machine, machining um, the finish and the bore of the brake disc, going then out of the machining line into the balancing machine, where we balance the brake disc and afterwards we have a measuring station for post-processed measuring and doing there as well the marking. 
At the end of the line, we have our robot cell where the pick up the brake disc from the conveyor and bring it into the boxes. After one box is full, the box goes out of the line and the operator can pick it up from the conveyor and bring it to the next step for coating or painting area. Michael, we have the first question yeah. from our uh, live chat. The question is, what are the advantages if I purchase a turnkey solution from Emac? So the advantage is uh, very simple. So Emac is responsible for the complete line. We're doing the development of the complete process and uh, we're doing uh, the specifications for each third party which is included in this line so the customer has only one responsible person and this is the project manager or the project planner from emac so you don't need to take care of several parties you have only one part partner in this in this system maybe also uh, one very important point is out of our experience many of the oem produ producers nowadays don't have so big planning departments they don't want to do this planning by themselves they want to have one face to the customer one face which they communicate with for the complete process chain and here we can do this job completely for you Thank you. We have another question. Um, how to integrate the balancing machine? Who is responsible for the process? As, as I already said, um, Emac is your contact partner. Emac will take care will take care of it. Will do the specifications to integrate the balancing machine into the manufacturing system. That means. Emac is responsible for the complete process, also for the balancing machines, the measuring machines, and the robot cells itself. So you have one contact partner, and this is this is the Emac. So we have the opportunity to provide a an, an simulation like this, where you see how the workflow will through the line, and we have there uh, an output of several data means we have an OEE calculation, we see where it's, um, yeah, where is the, the, the bottleneck and we can react against it. So on the next sheet, you see we put out some, some figures. We see here the machining operation, the OP1020, 3040, the 50 and the 60. And you see here on the green um, slide that the production is mentioned and the yellow is the empty in feed. Means at the end of the line, all the machines pulling. Means we have no stop, no uh, bottleneck. And this is what we can uh, do in front of during our quotation phase to give um, a good feeling to the customer that the system itself <clears throat> will work. On this calculation, all with the in put we give to the simulation, we have an OEE of 84%. And on this slide, we see um, how a worker pool will be. So we got often the question, how many um, workers we will need for this line. This shows it very clearly that one person will be more than enough because we have a setting time of 5%, five and a repair time for 2.4 percent so but um, 91 percent the operator is free and he can take care of other tasks as well for example another line or what else okay we have another question from our live chat and the question is how can the worker avo avoid loading wrong work pieces into the line that's a good Question, can you go please back to the overview of the line? So as you see here, we have our gantry system where we have our SPC station. And in this case, we have grippers, we have sensors where you can detect the diameter of the brake disc. So it means you have one in the SPC station and bring the wrong back and we'll bring it in into our line. The system will compare it to which diameter it should be if it's the wrong it will not introduce into the line. Therefore, it's covered. Okay, thank you. Then let's come to the process itself. So typically we are 
producing break discs in three or four operations. So here now we want to show you an example with four operations. So OP10 normally is turning the first side, rough cutting of the first side by clamping the parts inside the ventilation slots or for solid break discs either on the outer diameter or on the head inside or outside diameters. Then after OP10 we bring the part out of the machine, we turn the part, brings it back and then we are doing the turning operation of the second operation. Here also first of all rough cutting but sometimes already finishing some sequences, some areas. After that we are doing the drilling operation and sometimes also some fine turning operations there and at the end we are doing the quality of the part of the brake disc by using fine turning for the friction rings and the inner and outer head faces and so on. Thank you, Martin. Uh, there's a question uh, to Michael. Um, and the question is, what about overall space and power consumption to the thing you showed before? Okay. This line um, was planned regarding the, I would say, uh, the given facts from the customer means he gives us a, a floor space of X and Y. So we're planning then our system regarding his requirements. And also um, we have our um, well-known um, power consumptions of all of our machines that the um, customer can plan his plant um, very, very clear with all um, yeah, power and, and air supply we need for this line. And this is very, very early phase of the, of the of the, the project. Okay, thank you. And another question. Uh, why is 91% waiting shown? Is the line uh, not running? No, the line will run there. And this means only that the worker has free, uh, free time for doing other jobs. Uh, for example, uh, taking care of other lines, doing SPC parts, um, all that stuff, but he is not restricted to be on the line. The line itself will run without an operator most of the time. Okay, perfect. Thank you. I think now Martin can we go on. Can go ahead. Okay, <laughs> yeah. thank you. So, okay, so fine turning, then sometimes the request of the quality, especially of the surface quality and also of the geometrical accuracies are a little bit higher. Then, of course, we can also do fine grinding or grinding after the fine turning process or instead even instead the fine turning process by using a special machine like you can see here. So here on the left hand side we do have the straddle tool for pre-turning of the friction rings and at the end we are using two CBN cup wheels for the grinding process of the friction rings. We have another question. What are the benefits of simulation in terms of cost per piece? In a very early phase of the project, we are doing uh, or we can do a simulation like we saw on the screen. So means as the, the customers uh, give in facts, we can, we can simulate it and see where we need to optimize the system and how we need to optimize it. So the customer knows and gets a very good feeling that the, the, the manufacturing system will run afterwards uh, as, as good as possible. It's very important if we are planning or if you have as our customer, if you have to plan a big production line, not only the turning machines, but also all the equipment behind. It's very important for you to know already during the planning phase, during the quotation phases, what will be the output, what would be the efficiency, what even would be the cost per part. And here with our OEM simulation, which we can provide for that, uh, we can show you already during the planning phase what is the best tool change sequence, what is the best tool change concept. We can already optimize the processes accordingly so that you have to stop the machines as less as possible for tool changes. We can use also different type of materials for the cutting inserts so that we can combine everything together, our experience, your experience, to increase the throughput of the of the line itself to decrease the throughput time from the break disc through the line and this means at the end also a reduction of the cost per part. Yeah, thank you. And we have another question. It's uh, regarding the next page. What is meant by fine turning? 
Can't we do same initial turning process? Fine turning means, of course, we are doing the warp cutting of the friction rings and also of the inner and outer head faces in the diameters uh, in OP10 or 20. Fine turning just means we finish the accuracy of the brake discs. And of course, operation 10 and also 20 directly influences the fine turning process of OP40. So if you don't have a stable machine concept in OP1020, you could have problems at the OP40 process. Fine turning before drilling, does this make sense? Some customers want to have the drilling before fine turning because they don't want to have the high pressure of the drilling process of the uh, head out and inner wing faces after the fine turning, which may could influence the accuracy or the quality then there at these areas. Some customers don't want to have the interrupted cut before the fine turning process. So both ways are possible and frankly spoken, our machines can do both. The stability of our machines are that good that there will be no big influence, no big impact if you do it before or after the drilling operation. And here we are also working together with you as a partner uh, in such planning phases. If you would like to have it before the fine turning process, we can do, but we can also do it later on. Okay, thank you. Good, so going ahead. So now here you can see now a typical production line consisting of four VSC 400 duo machines. Duo machine means we have two spindles, we have two completely separated working areas. Each spindle, each working area can do an individual operation of the process. This means we can do on the left hand spindle OP10, on the right hand spindle OP20, or of course you can also do two times the same like we are doing it here. The request of this customer was a very short cycle time in the line. And here we can do in the complete line concept with three lines all together, a line concept of 13 seconds. So this means we need more spindles, but the advantage of our machines is that they are very compact, especially the VSC for the door machines. So we can put four machines, eight spindles in total in one line. Even here with a robot unit system, with a dust exhaust system, on a very compact working area or space area at the customer. And how the process itself looks like, I want to show you now in a short movie. So here we have four setups. So we start with the war part, which is delivered in a box. Then we have a robot bin picking cell. First of all, we are checking the orientation of the parts with a laser sensor. Then the magnetic gripper of the robot unit takes a war part, brings it out. Then we check the orientation of the part again and put it onto the infeed conveyor. Then the part will be transported onto our internal automation. Part will be clamped as usual, and then the process itself starts. Rough cutting the first side. Then after the OP10, we transport the part out. Our own made gantry system takes the part, flips it over to remove the chips and brings it onto the buffer band to the next operation sequence. Then second operation, we are doing the same. We are doing rough cutting here. That's now already an, an machine part. Therefore, you cannot see so many chips. After that, again, our gantry brings the part to the next buffer band so that we always have also buffers between the machines to avoid here some uh, unnecessary still stands, machine still stands, and to increase the OEE. Then OP30, we are doing the drilling process. We can use double fold drilling heads like here. We can use six fold drilling heads, or even we can drill once per once. So we are completely open for that. And at the end, we are doing now the fine turning process. 
a use of our own NC straddle tool to do the fine turning of the friction rings and also all the other necessary turning operations there. And at the rear end of the production line itself, we have another gantry also to remove the chips and brings this part then also to the outfit conveyor to the next operation. And to remove the chips is very important because the following peripheries like balancing, like measuring, like laser marking don't want to have too many chips on the part for that operation. Martin, we have a question from yeah. our live chat. The question is, how are the working areas protected against dust? We are doing the turning and drilling process by use of only air for the cooling. We don't use coolant, we don't use MQL. Some of our customers even nowadays are still using coolant and MQL, but the big disadvantage is that you have to wash the part, you have to conserve the part after the process before you can start with the painting or coating process. And these are additional costs which are not necessary. So we are doing it normally dry. And if you are doing it dry, it's always uh, a question how to protect the machine. So we have a completely sealed and covered working area. This means all the chips stay in the working area. We have additional ceilings against the dust in our main components. And also one very important for point is that all of our main components like the ball screws, like the linear guideways, are outside of the working area. There is no ball screw, no linear guideway inside the working area. So there is no danger that this will be influenced by dust or chips. And also for the dust, we have several out, um, let's say outlets for the exhaust system where we connect the exhaust system to exhaust the dust out of the machine area. Thank you, Martin. And we have another question for you. What material of tools, carbide, ceramic, CBN, do you recommend for machining brake discs? In the past, we used mainly carbide, but this is long time ago. If the material is good enough, of course, we will use CBN and ceramics. But there are two very important factors for that. First of all is the storage time. So normally there should be a storage time between casting process and production process of at least seven days. Some official studies say between nine and 13 days. We say at least seven days, nine days of course is better because then the material is, let's say, old enough that the, the materials inside the casting are very homogeneously and you can machine it much better. The second part is the question how many air inclusions or carbide inclusions, hard material inclusions do you have in the casting itself. So if the casting is good, if it's really very homogeneously and according to the deans, then we can use of course CBN even for the rough cutting process. Normally we are using ceramics but we also can use CBN cutting uh, material for the rough cutting process and for finishing process normally we are using CBN, that's clear. And for the drilling, of course, carbide. So this was the process chain for the standard four or three settings break disks. But some break disks needs additional machining like you can see here. This is a little bit of premium model of a carb break disk. And here we have so-called perforation holes. These perforation holes has the only uh, operation that they have to bring out the brake dusk during the brake process and to cool down also the brake disc a little bit more than normally. And how to produce this part or these holes itself, I want to show you now, also with a short movie. Also for this we have a machine. And normally we are doing this in two processes. So first side and then the second side. And we are using here a standard machine. We just take out the normal turret and we put in three individually movable drilling spindles so that we can do three drilling operations at the same time or two drilling operations like you could see here in this movie and then use the third spindle for some engravings or some smaller drilling operations which sometimes are also necessary in this kind of break disks.
but this is really a standard machine and of course we can put this machine also into the complete production line as an afterwards following process or we can use this machine with a closed automation system even as a standalone machine beside of our already existing production line in your facility. Another question for you, Martin. How much is the maximum DTV? Okay, um, this depends pretty much also on the process itself. If you are talking about fine turning as last operation, we can achieve a DTV which is much less than 10 microns or is process safe. If we are talking about grinding, like I shown before, we can achieve a DTV which is less than 5 microns or is process safe. What is the maximum cutting speed we can achieve in brake disc turning? Can we use CBN inserts for higher speeds and better finish? Yes, of course, you can use CBN inserts for higher speeds and better surfaces. Um, the question, we have two questions here. One question is, which maximum speed can we achieve with CBN? And with CBN, we are normally talking about a cutting speed of 1000 up to 1500 meters per minute cutting speed not spindle speed and the limitation is at the moment in the clamping system if your clamping system is suitable to achieve such high revolutions such high speeds of course you can see being at the highest possible cutting speed but the problem is that at least in OP10, where we are using normally a 3 charge or 6 charge chucks, you have a maximum spindle speed between 2500, maybe sometimes 3000. If you are using a clamping metal or a collar chuck, of course you can go higher, up to 3400 or even more, if the machine is suitable for that. So the, the limitation is more in the clamping chuck and less in the, in the machine ability or in the, in the cutting insert ability. Okay, and we just go on with the next question. How much depth of cut in machining in roughing operations like 5 mm per side? What about tool life? So if you are talking about ceramic inserts, 5 mm on EMAC machines is no problem at all. As I explained before, the stability of the machine is good enough. Also, the stability of the complete turret system is good enough. There is a question about the tool holder. If you have a very rigid tool holder and a very good interface to the turret itself, 5 mm is no problem. It could be even more. The bigger problem, which I see, is that especially for the rough cutting operations, you have a raw material and you have a raw material tolerance during the casting of the part. This means normally you have plus minus two millimeters. So if you're calculating in your cycle time operation or in your process operation with five millimeter maximum cutting speed, and then you get additional two millimeters out of the raw part, then you have seven millimeters. So there you have to be a little bit careful. And the second point is some casting materials even have some uh, wording, some uh, letters cast it in the casting part. So these are normally even higher than, than the normal stock, let's say 1.5 to 2 millimeters, and this is in addition as well. And then there at these areas, you even have an interrupted cut. And this directly will also influence then your lifetime. So if you are talking about five millimeters depth, normal cutting and process parameters for ceramics, we are talking about one about, it depends very much on the material, Therefore, this is just an estimation. It, we are talking about 120 up to 200, maybe 250 parts per cutting edge. But this pretty much depends on the material quality, on the inclusions of hardened material inside the casting, and also especially on the storage time between the casting process and the machining process. Is an access for tool change or insert index available in the machine? We have some machine types with tool changers. So we will show this also later in this presentation. There you can do a tool change during the main time because the tool change is outside of the machine area. So the machine is running and we can do the tool change. Normally, if we are using our standard machines, we don't have such tool changes, but to shorten the sequences or the times for the tool change, we can either use a captor system 
so that you can directly take out the, the tool holder itself from the turret and in combination with RFID chip uh, systems we can say okay you can preset the next tool already in your presetting uh, department, bring the tool beside the machine, then you just read the RFID chip so then you have all the tool data already in your tool uh, data in the machine in the database and then you just change the tool and you can directly go ahead with the with the new tool in the process. Okay, thank you Martin. I think we can now go on. Okay, <laughs> good. So now I want to give you some news and very, very hot news. Um, since a couple of days we can proudly present you that the share of Feinbau GmbH is now part of the worldwide EMAC group. So and here the big advantage is now that not only the machines from Scherer Feinbau but also the experience and they have also a lot of experience in applications for break disks and I'm quite sure some of you have already Scherer machines in house and they are working very well as well as the EMAC machines so here we now can combine as well the experience of both companies and we can share everything to give you the best fitting solution for your applications the best fitting solution. And how such a solution could look like, you can see here, this is now a solution from Sherva directly, which is producing truck brake discs, truck friction rings for truck brakes. And we are talking here about a line or three line in together with Robert Cell in the beginning, with Robert Cell at the end, with the operations itself, and then also with a balancing machine included, three setups, 45 seconds. So. Now, also with these machine types, we are now able to support you in all sizes, in all kinds of brake discs, as well as brake drums, of course. Even for railway, we can provide perfect solutions for brakes for you. Question regarding uh, Shara. Does EMAC now also offer Shara machines? Are combinations also possible? Um, yes, for sure. As uh, Shara is now part of the EMAC group, um, we are looking that we are getting the best for our customer. Means, what is the need for the workpiece? We are choosing a Shara machine or, or and an EMAC machine to bring in to our manufacturing system to get out the best for our customer's workpiece. Okay, thank you. Okay, until now. We were just talking about pickup machines. Now let's talk also about spindle down machines. EMAC Group is also providing spindle down machines and also here very efficient solutions, high flexible solutions, especially for the brake disc applications, especially for the after sales market, where you have normally very small lot sizes, but many many different part type variations. This means you have to set up the complete system, you have to set up the machines in a very quick manner to avoid still stands of the machines to increase the total throughput of the parts through your operation process. And here we also can provide a very efficient solution to you like you can see here on this example. We have here a robot unit, again a robot unit in the center which is uh, responsible for the loading and unloading of the parts and we do have three machines for three operations which are standing around the robot unit and these machines are very flexible so that you can do a very quick setup, quick change over from one part type to the next one. And here you can see how this machine type is working. So here we have the spindle down, we have the turret upside and you have a very good working area availability for the operator. So the operator can directly put the part in by hand if it's necessary or of course we can load the machine with, the, um, with a gantry or with a robot unit whatever you want. Martin, we have a question regarding the flexibility. Yes. What is flexible about this system? The robot limits the flexibility. <laughs> On the first few, yes, let's go back. On the first few, yes, you're right. The robot stands in the center. And now comes the big butt. 
The robot is loading the machine from the left hand side. This means we have here closed safety fences of course, but we have the full availability of the working area from the front side. And in front side we have the working door. So you can open the working door like you can see here. The operator can put the parts in manually. The, the complete access is available during the manual operation of the machine and this is especially then very flexible if you have to do a let's say a short time job you have to stop the current production on the line because you need urgently to produce 10 15 20 maybe 50 parts between and then you have to go back with the original part to produce this again in this way you just stop the robot unit then you are using the machines by manual, you are loading the part, you are unloading the part manually for this 50 part or 100 part, I don't know. And then after that sequence you don't have to set up anything else. Of course you have to change the clamping jaws and locators maybe in the tools. But after that the robot sequence is still the same and you can go ahead with the next or with the, the original production of the part. Good. So. And last but not least, as I mentioned uh, a little bit earlier today, we do have also an automatic tool change system. And especially for this spindle down machine with the VM9 ATC automatic tool changer, we do have a machine type where you can load the tool magazine during the machine is working. It's a machine with a completely splitted area for the working process and for the tool changers. Like you can see here. So you can load the tools <coughs> and during the machine is running and this machine cannot only load or automatically load unload turning tools or drilling or milling tools but this machine can also load straddle tools so you even can prepare the next straddle tool for the next operation to put it in during the operation and at the end of the presentation we want to just give you a short summarize about your benefits, your advantages, if you would choose EMAG as a turnkey supplier for the whole process chain. So first of all, EMAG, as well as Shero of course, is known for decades in brake disc manufacturing. EMAG was one of the pioneers with the spindle pickup system for the turning machines. And since this time, EMAG machines were used and are still be used for weight disc manufacturing. And we do have machines in market which are older than 15, even sometimes 20 years or even more, which are producing weight discs in the same quality as it is required from our customers. The second point is we have a lot of machines out in the market. We have a lot of experience and we have a large numbers as well as with experts which can support you during the planning phase during the quotation phase, but also then afterwards in case of an order, during the order production phase and everything. So also here we can support you in the best possible way. And what Michael Earing was perfectly presenting to you before, it would be only one phase to the customer. We do have a turnkey solution possibility. We can provide you everything from one source. Of course we have to work then we have to interfere with the sub suppliers like balancing, like measuring and so on. But you would have only one face to the customer, one key person, let's say key person, which is responsible for your project during the planning, during the quotation phase, but also later on during the ordering phase in the production phase and in our house. Another very important point, especially nowadays in these not really easy times, the EMAC group itself has a big financial strength. This means if you would purchase a line from EMAC today, you could be sure that in five years, if you have problems with spare parts or wear parts or with services or with some new applications which you want to implement, EMAC will be there. This means you don't have to go to an external service provider which maybe does not know the machine, which does not know the process, which cannot help you in the right manner. EMAC will be there and can help you for that. And last but not least, we have a lot of customers which have facilities, subsidiaries all over the world. This means if you have the headquarters in Germany or in Europe, let's say in Europe, we can provide you the first line production support for your headquarter company, 
And later on, if you want to spread it out worldwide to USA, to Brazil, to China, to India, wherever else, we can provide you as well in this country with our experts. We have all over the world in the biggest and the most important regions our own big facilities which are doing exactly the same that we are doing here in Salah, in our headquarters. And if not, we have at least the experts which can go there very fast. And this means we can provide you if you have later on the idea to spread the same production line out worldwide, like we did it already many, many times in projects for OEM, tier one, tier two suppliers as well. So that's all from my side. Thank you very much. Yeah, thank you very much for you, Martin and Michael. And as already mentioned, we will now discuss further questions from our live chat. If you have a question, that you would like to ask in confidence, you are very welcome to let us know. Then we will arrange a one-to-one -one appointment with you after the webinar. Then I would say we are now ready and look forward to your question. And I think we have already a question from the chat. The question is, in the future, break disks will be coated. Do you have experience already? Of course we do have. We have already machines in the market for grinding of the hard-coated brake disks. We have even machines in the market for coating of these special ceramic materials like you can see here in this premium class one where we are doing the grinding operation for the green grinding and after hardening for the hard grinding as well. And we have a lot of development corporations at the moment with suppliers, even also with some customers of us to develop the process for the hard-coded grinding uh, processes for these hard-coded practices. And inside the complete EMAC group, we do have also the experts for the coating with our EMAC laser tech colleagues in Heubach. We can even provide here the best fitting solution for this coating laser application. So we are working also there with many universities together, with some customers together to develop this process, to develop the right machines, because the problem for this hard coating is the material itself. One problem is it's very hard, of course, we have to grind it, but that's not a, the big problem. The problem is the cost of the powder, of this coating powder, and you have to avoid too much uh, too much um, dust which you cannot use anymore. Therefore we are working also in this direction to optimize the process itself and to reduce this amount of dust which you cannot use anymore by collecting them and reuse them again. Okay, thank you. The next question is what about cylindricity and roundness we can achieve in rough turning in fine turning? It depends on the material again, on the, on the complete process. I would say we have to check it in, in, in detail in each application. But for rough turning normally we say less than 0 0.1 or 0.005 if it's necessary. Um, for fine turning of course we can do better. So for fine turning roundness less than five mi uh, less than 0 0.05, 0 0.03, um, but we have to see it in the, in the process itself. It's always depending also on the clamping chuck. Here, especially for the roundness, clamping and clamping situation is a very important point. Um, but let's say, say it in that way, send us your request, we will check it and answer you in detail. How do you deal with the scrap generated during the making of the disc? We normally don't uh, deal with that because we have to bring this scrap part back to the wall casting uh, supplier to get some money for that and get a new one maybe. Uh, or if you're talking about how to bring the NOK part out of the process. So here we also do have different solutions. In combination with an in-process measuring, we can take the part out uh, in, during the, let's say, random check or with an, a special outfit conveyor only for NOK parts or, of course, at the end of the line, if you are doing the post-process measuring, then the post-process measuring unit normally has also at least a position for one NOK part where you can take the part out. Are OEE simulations also offered? 
Um, yes, for sure. We also offer um, the OEE simulation as we saw previous in our presentation. And uh, the big benefit is that we will go through with the customer to bring in all the figures and facts he has and of the experience out of his um, uh, current production lines. And then we will do this together to see where is the best solution for our customer. Okay, thank you. The next question. How is the drilling machining? Try machining MQL? We can do both. Well, we can do all three times. We can even do with coolant. Um, it's up to the process itself. It's up to the request of the customer and the philosophy of the customer. But for our machine concept, for the process itself, we can do it. There's no problem at all. Okay, perfect. And next question. Do you have solutions for compound disks? Um, yes. We already developed some uh, projects for compound disc, for several, for aluminium, for steel, for compound disc, several designs uh, we had. So if you have a special uh, request for that, please come to us and we will go through this together and develop uh, also a system for you. Okay, thank you. Next question. Is in-process measuring possible? Ah, okay, also to this question, I think I gave already a short introduction. Yes, of course, it is possible. We can equip all of our machine types with in-process measuring units, which would be a touch probe, which is located outside of the working area. So it's completely protected against chips and dust. And so you can measure every part after the turning process, or you can even say in the control with a sequence that you want to measure every tenth, every fifteenth part or whatever. And then um, you can also use this measured data for a tool setup or for an adjustment of the tool in the tool database. So it is possible, yes. Okay, perfect. So I think this was the last question from our chat. If you uh, don't have any more questions at the moment, here you can see the contact details of Martin and Michael. And you are, of course, very welcome to contact us there after the webinar. We have now reached the end of our webinar and hope that you were able to take some interesting impulses with you. We would like to thank you once again for your participation, also in the name of our two experts in the studio. Take care and maybe until next time.